This is the Covia LP gas adapter. This is designed primarily to adapt propane type tanks, the disposable type tanks, to adapt them for use of a number of devices, including stoves and lanterns that operate off of canisters. This particular device is uh, I bought off of eBay and um, the company or seller appears to be overseas, probably in Korea. And the initial instructions that were on the eBay site were in the language of the seller. I didn't understand them, so I asked the seller to translate this, and this is what it looks like. It's pretty straightforward. It basically is um, an attachment that converts the propane bottle uh, to a lindle type valve that is seen on the typical canister. It's a fairly simple looking device that uh, is made of fairly substantial brass, very nicely machined as you can see, has some nice shiny surfaces. This is the bottom portion that attaches to a propane type bottle, typical kind that you can get at Walmart. And this is the part that attaches to the usual connector that is used for canister type stoves, the typical backpacking type. And there is also on this particular model a, or an adjusting screw that you can see there. And this is supposed to allow some degree of regulation of the output of this and uh, so this is a fairly simple device. You basically attach the connector for your stove, your backpacking stove, to this portion here, just like you would for a canister. And then you attach this end to the propane bottle, but there's actually a, an interlock or safety valve mechanism. If you attach this first to the propane bottle, nothing comes out from here. You have to attach the connector for your stove and if you disconnect either end it makes no difference because it is contained so there's no worry about gas exiting at any particular time so this is a fairly simple device now the first stove that I tried to work with this was this stove this is from Primus that actually is meant for laboratory use. It has an adjustable air inlet. As you can see here, it's operated by rotating this collar. And it's basically the same kind of stove design that is on some of their backpacking stoves. This is used indoors typically for lab type work and the end attaches to a canister, but canisters are kind of expensive. So having a propane source, especially with propane bottles, if you can refill, there are adapters that will allow you to take a bulk tank and refill uh, the smaller one pound cylinders. So this becomes relatively inexpensive to operate in an indoor environment compared to canisters, which typically are not refillable. And even if they are refillable, they have their other problems associated with it. When I tried to connect this the first time, it seemed simple enough. You just simply screw this on as you would for any similar type canister. And then I went ahead and attached this to the propane bottle. And when I tried to light it, nothing came out. So I tightened it even further until finally the plate here contacted the shoulder of the adapter and there was still nothing. So I'm trying to think, well, what happened? It turns out that there is a small screw that is on the inside of this LP gas adapter. 
and it has a small slot in it. Now, the screw doesn't do anything by itself as far as I can tell. You can rotate it to your heart's content and nothing happens. It doesn't go in and out. But that screw has a slot for a flathead type screwdriver. And unfortunately, the slot is right in, in the middle and there's a pin that is on the corresponding part of the stove, whether it's this kind, which attaches typically directly to the canister, or the kind that has a fuel line and it attaches at a distance. But they all have this little center pin that is on the uh, connector. Now, unfortunately, this pin happens to hit right in the center of this slot. And my feeling is, is that it takes up a little bit of the space that would normally be flat uh, and that is enough to keep the center portion of this thing from depressing fully. So I came up with some modifications to assist me in trying to push this in a little further. And much of the video now is about these minor modifications. But they did work, and that was the important part. The first thing I wanted to do was measure the opening of this uh, this top of the adapter and I can see that it's pretty small about three millimeters maximally so what I did was is I made up a spacer or disc or dot that I then placed on the inside of this this little disc is made out of titanium uh, five thousandths of an inch thickness and um, it took some time to get this trimmed right, but after some effort I was able to do it, and it seemed to actually um, make quite a difference as far as the ability to cover this slot. This was important because when I then tried the Primus lab burner, it did work, and that was an important step forward. As you can see, the uh, small disc or dot that I made is very, very small. It only measures about two and a half millimeters in maximum diameter. It is certainly very easy to lose. Another problem that I found was that this is so small that it will fit into the slot of that screw. If that happens, you have a problem with the pin now depressing against this small piece of metal so you have to make sure the disc is flat on top of the screw. Now that seemed to work for the most part but it wasn't entirely satisfactory so I found another way to modify the pin arrangement and what I did was I found a, a plastic tube that happened to be just the right size for the pin that's inside these connectors. And it turns out that the fix for this is nothing more than a plastic shaft of a Q-tip. This particular Q-tip is a Johnson & Johnson Q-tip that is made primarily for kids. And I found that the nature of this plastic was ideal for this particular application. I went ahead and cut small sections using a utility knife that were five millimeters in length. And this appears to be relatively universal for all the pins that I've checked. I have several stoves. And as would be expected, there are manufacturing tolerances that are kept in these stoves. And so they will all pretty much be the same length for the various pieces of uh, hardware. So the next thing to do is put this plastic um, spacer over the pin and I use a uh, hemostat which is a kind of a fine type of needle nose pliers for medical purposes and I first position it over the shaft of the pin and then once it's positioned in place I remove the hemostat and then I gently push it down until it's flush and as you can see there's still a slight 
increase in the distance away from the end of the pin. And for this adapter, this turns out to be ideal because that's exactly what I'm trying to get this to do, to push the screw down slightly further. One of the concerns I had initially was that the increase in the wall thickness, essentially, around the pin might occlude the opening for the adapter, but in practice it doesn't seem to have any effect. You have to be careful positioning this anyway over the um, the connector with the with this plastic piece over the top of the adapter. As you can see from the note, if you use these two things together, and I'll have more notes about that, you have to be careful that the disc is flat, and the best way to make sure of that is to, one, inspect it before you put these two things together, but also have the adapter in a vertical position, not on its side, because as you might expect, it could but would be very easy to dislodge this small disc. Now the good news is, is that this little disc is used primarily if you're going to be doing a direct connect of the adapter to the to the stove, such as that Primus lab burner. But there is a workaround, and that is something like this. It's a common adapter that you can find again on eBay. This is made by I think Brunton. And um, but there are several different makes of these. And what you can do with this is you can put the little plastic thing over the connector end that goes to the adapter, which is the part you see on the left of that picture. And the stove itself would go over the center portion. There are many advantages, as you can see from the text in this. And um, but the the most important thing is, is that it does not require then the use of this little tiny dot titanium disc, which would be unbelievably easy to lose. If you ever dropped it, that would be the end. You'd never see it again. And I would recommend finding everything possible to avoid using that disc and instead use this little plastic piece instead. The adjuster is uh, seen in this picture, and um, it is a very fine slot. And what I found was a eyeglass type tool that was at Walmart. It cost about two dollars, and this is actually a very nice piece of equipment. It has a very small blade at about a little less than two millimeters in width and it fits this little uh, screw very well. However, in an actual test, I found that the adjustment screw did very little when it came down to a real-world situation. And these following video clips of the demonstration of the adapter, the LP gas adapter, in actual use um, show that, at least for these small stoves, the output from the adapter, even with the um, screw set to the minimum, is too great. It overwhelms the jet that's on these uh, small stoves. There's a slight difference, as you can see, in the composite that is the end of this, uh, these video clips, but it's relatively small. However, the output is greater when you look at this compared to the output from the canister.